In this video, we will look at how to introduce resources such as employees or waitresses with the help of resource allocation blocks. We currently have a model of a restaurant. Let's quickly review the key components of the model. The entity generator is used to create entities which represent the customers of the restaurant. We assign attributes to these entities using the set attribute block and modify the attributes using a MATLAB script in the attribute function block. We have a queue that models the customers waiting in line and a server that represents the actual food service where the service time is determined by an attribute of the entity. We use timeout blocks to start timing how long customers have been waiting for service and then model them leaving the restaurant when their patience has been exceeded. Now let's add employees to this model using resource allocation blocks. Resource management blocks in sim events make it possible to design, allocate, acquire, and release resources to solve a number of different resource allocation problems. There are three resource management blocks in the Entity Management Library, Resource Pool, Resource Acquire, and Resource Release. You use the Resource Pool block to define resources. Resources require a name. In our case, we are modeling waitresses, so we will name our resource waitresses. You can define the granularity, which means you can say whether this resource is a discrete unit, like a person, or whether fractional amounts can be used, such as in the case of fuel. The reusable on release option specifies whether the resource is consumed when used, such as in the case of fuel, or whether it can be reused, such as in the case of a person or truck. The total amount of the resources available can be specified in the dialog. Right now, let's say we have a small restaurant and we only have three waitresses. We would specify the number of waitresses in this field. We could also have the total amount being sent in from a signal port when we want to vary it over time, say when the company has different levels of staffing based on the time of day. The Resource Acquire block is used to attach a resource to an entity. We want to use this block to attach the waitresses to the customers waiting for service in the restaurant. We need to specify the maximum number of waiting entities or customers waiting for a resource. This is modeling how many people can wait for that resource and not block other activities preceding it. The acquisition priority indicates which resource acquire block has higher priority for a resource if there are two resource acquisition blocks or streams of customers vying for the same resource. To specify which resources are to be acquired, choose the resource in the available resources list, move it to the selected resources list, and specify how much of the resource is required. In our case, we only need one waitress per customer. We can also have the customers use the timeout port and leave the restaurant if they get tired waiting for a waitress. To release the worker, we use the resource release block. If we run the simulation, we can see that we have a situation where customers are leaving the restaurant because they are running out of patience waiting for a waitress to be available. The new resource management blocks make it easier to define, acquire, and release resources and look at problems of resource allocation, contention, and acquisition, making sim events a more powerful modeling domain for Simulink.